Boker Tov, Les, Shalom, Adi, Boker Tov, everyone. I'm trying to be quiet so you can watch. You're watching Bethlehem wake up in the morning. I'm as close as I can get right now. Truthfully, I'm in Ephrata, which is Bethlehem according to the Torah. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Sabra. Good morning, Belinda. We're gonna do three things, All right? Quiet. We're gonna we're gonna blow the shofar soon. We're gonna say psalms, and we're gonna watch sunrise over Bethlehem. You're seeing King Herod's burial tomb to the right of the sun. Good morning, Larry. If y'all don't mind, I'm gonna blow the shofar as you watch the sunrise. You don't have to hear me. You don't have to see me. You have to. Feel godliness right now. Bethlehem craves this sound. Bethlehem is a PLO terrorist stronghold, unfortunately, and it craves redemption. So does Jerusalem. So does every other millimeter of this land that I'm standing in. We got to get serious about our unity. Rosh Hashanah is around the corner. This isn't me preaching to you. I worked on myself this Shabbat. My son started wearing his tzitzit at school every day. So did I. Because of him. And he's seven. So when the children are teaching the parents Torah, through their actions, because of all of their friends surrounding them doing the same, even though we happen to be surrounded by Nazi-like evil every single day, the Jewish nation has never been more powerful and spiritual. King Solomon's times can't even touch this. The amount of Torah, the amount of unity, the amount of strength, the amount of growth, the amount of beauty that you see from the most simple of person, fixing your refrigerator in your home, teaching you Torah. 
to the bus driver who wishes you a Shabbat Shalom, even though he has an Arabic accent. We're in times of redemption. And you're standing at the highest hilltops, blowing the shofar over the birthplace of King David. Now I'm going to read a quick psalm, and I just want to say one last thing. The coolest thing about this time of introspection and repentance and change, that is an eternal covenant in the Torah. This isn't temporary. The day of atonement, the day of affliction is so eternal that God warns you, if you fail to afflict yourself on this day, you will be eternally cut off from your people. But we don't think of hellfire and negative and fear right now. We think of love and unity and following the path of light, which is Torah, which is why God gave it to us, all of us as a nation on Sinai, which is why all of us at once as a nation says, we will do this. We will guard this. We want to be a part of this. And it's still ringing true today. Psalm 30. Mizmor Shir Chanukat Habayit Le David, a psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple of David. Aromimcha Adonai Ki Delitani, Velo Samachta Evali, Adonai Elohai Shivati Elecha Vetir Peini, Adonai Halita Min Shaol Nafshi, Chaitani Miyar Debor, Zamrul Adonai Chasida Behodu Lezecha Kadsho, Ki Rega Baapo Chayim Birtsono Beerev, Yelen Bechi Vela Boker Rino. Ba'ani amarti b'shalvi, bal emot liolam adonai b'ir tzoncha hemadato lawari oz, histarta ponecha hito nifho, elecha adonai ekro ve'el adonai etchanan. Ma betza v'dami b'irdoti el shachat ha'yodcha afar, ha'yagid amitecho. Shema adonai, v'chaneni adonai ha'yei ozer li, v'fachta mispadi l'mecholi, v'tachta saki v'tazreni simcho, l'ma'an, a song for the dedication of the temple of David. This is a psalm of David. I will extol you, Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol. You saved my life from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones. And that's you, all of you. This is David talking to all of us. He wrote it in Hebrew. He wrote it in these hills. He was thinking of the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel as he wrote it. But these are words that even... People that aren't Jews are saying all over the world by the hundreds and hundreds of millions. That's power. For his anger lasts but a moment. His favor, a lifetime. Weeping may linger at nightfall, but joy comes in the morning. Doesn't it? Look how beautiful. This to me is joy. Getting up early, making my kids lunch for school before the sun rises. And coming out here and sharing the glory and beauty and majesty of heaven on earth with each and every one of you. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. When I was carefree, I thought I shall never be shaken. Lord, when I enjoyed your favor, you made me stand firm. And as a mighty mountain, when you hid your face, I was terrified. To you, Lord, I called. Now it's interesting, hid your face. I'm going to teach you something that I've been 
just addicted to lately. And it's really the story of Purim. Hester Panim, we're all covering our faces. And I say that, I think I've mentioned this last week, that it says in the times of Mashiach, and of course the word Mashiach is used throughout the writings, the prophets, it could be the anointed one. Cyrus was called a Mashiach. It doesn't mean that he was the redeemer of Israel that God brings in order to bring peace to the world and unity and everybody speaks in one pure tongue and the temple is rebuilt and the exiles return. So when we use that word, we can't relate it to the English term Messiah that you're commonly using because it could be used for a multiple amount of people throughout the Torah. But here what we know is that when God does send the Redeemer eventually, which is the line of from the city you're seeing, the Davidic line, which is, I think, amazing that we can stand here and even look at Bethlehem as a free people, even though Bethlehem is not free yet, and we've all lost the ball on that one, unfortunately. But it does say that there will be a great Hester Punim, that there will be a great hiding of God's face during that time. And even though we're not going into the holiday of Purim right now, we're going into Rosh Hashanah, of course. And then the days of, uh, uh, of repentance, and then Yom Kippur, and then, of course, we have Sukkot, many holidays. But Purim is amazing because it's identical to what we're facing now. You have to hide your face. It's so visible to all of us, yet we either allow the fear, of course, there's a lot of people in pain and suffering. I'm not saying this sickness doesn't exist. I know a lot of people that are in a lot of pain and suffering. What I'm referring to is in how many years have we ever seen such a phenomenon where the entire world is covering its face at once? And here we're reading the psalm that talks about when you hid your face, I was terrified. And that is God giving us the choice to choose. Am I hidden from this story of Purim? Was it simply your might that destroyed the decree against you? Or was it God covering you with his peace because you as a people got together under the orders of Esther and Mordechai as one people in the town square and you fasted and you afflicted yourself and you prayed and you repented and God accepted your repentance and prayer. And that's what it takes. And that is the story of Jonah and Nineveh. And that is what King Solomon told us, that when the temple is destroyed, how will we pray? How will we get repentance? He said, face Jerusalem, no matter where you might find yourself on earth. And you will be scattered, he told them, when this temple's gone. It's in the writings. This isn't me. This is Solomon. This is God. He says, face Jerusalem and pray and repent, meaning change yourself. It isn't through faith alone. It is through action. And it is only through action that we pick ourselves up every single day and move forward. You tell a Marine that it's through faith alone that he's going to storm the beaches. He says, hell no, I got to grab my rifle and I got to actually move to the beach. I have to actually shoot at Nazis. I have to watch my brothers die next to me. I have to risk my life. It's only when we walk into the water does the water split. And sometimes it takes a lot of casualties to get there. That is what we're going through right now, all of us, the entire world. This is not unique to the Jewish nation. This is a day of judgment, a day of prayer for all of us, every living creature. So look in the mirror and repeat. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I pleaded. What profit is there in my death, in my going down into the pit? Can the dust acknowledge you? Can it proclaim your truth? Hear, Lord, and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. You turn my lament into dancing. You remove my sackcloth. And you girded me with joy that my soul may sing your praises and never cease. I will acknowledge you forever, Lord my God. And on that, I'm going to blow the shofar. Because that's the greatest singing I can do right now. I think my voice is shot anyway.
been a long night, guys. It's been a long night. That's it. One day we're going to hear Tokea Shofar Gadol, a massive shofar blast. On the day of our redemption. Same words were read on these hills for how many thousands and thousands of years in the very language that my children are speaking now. It's beautiful. I can hear it echoing all over Bethlehem. That's cool. <laughs> Boker Tov from Israel. Be strong and be powerful. Care for the people that are suffering because a lot of them are. Do one little thing. Learn from your child how to become a better person for God. Get away from your ego enough to admit to the world that you haven't been wearing tzitzit, a commandment that goes back 4,200 years. That's written on every single mezuzah. That's written on my tefillin that I wear every day. Yeah, they're uncomfortable. But so is getting up in the middle of the night to protect those that you love. It's not just physical, and it sure as heck isn't me doing the protection. When you really start to understand that and grasp that, then you know who we are as a people. Until then, you're still gonna think that it's your rifle or your pistol or your uniform or your cool gear that's saving the day. And that's exactly what we learn against. We do our part and then God will carry us the rest of the way, guaranteed, or your money back. And that's a Jewish person saying your money back, so you know it's true. <laughs> I can say that. Come on, guys, laugh. It's almost a holiday. See, I can't even get the shofar going anymore. Y'all broke me. Shavua Tov. Hey, I'm releasing my annual amazing, I think, um, Rosh Hashanah picture this evening Israel time. Also, we're planting trees. We're putting a bench in, in our fields. This is the last day we're planting trees. So join us around, I don't know, around sunset Israel time. I don't have an exact time yet, but it's going to be beautiful. And I just want to say much love from this beautiful land. Last thing we're going to do together is we're going to satisfy that positive commandment of blessing Israel. So let's do it together. God bless Israel. God bless you for blessing Israel. God bless you for standing with Israel. You know why you're doing it. And as I always say, we do have different ways of seeing different things sometimes in relation to godliness. But if we can all band together at the very least under the skies of Israel, with Bethlehem around us, with Jerusalem below us, Hebron, everything, the whole history and future colliding as one, if we could at least band together under God's oneness and say, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Liolam Va'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Break it down. If you want to reflect godliness, you have to reflect oneness. That starts from you. V'at HaShalom. And you are peace. It starts with your home. U'bet HaShalom. And your home is peaceful. And everything of you is peaceful. It's, it has to be that step. You can't rush that. You can't cheat. You can't fake it on the outside and try to be somebody else on the inside or the opposite. You must start with your own personal cleansing. It doesn't mean lashes. It doesn't mean whipping yourself or cutting yourself. Or it means fasting for 24 hours, God says. I give you 20, give me 24 hours of your entire year, you lazy people, he's saying. 
That's all I need. As a matter of fact, give me one minute of that 24 hours. Grant God his kingship. That is the entire purpose of this holiday. Malchut. Kingship. It's not a physical king. That is God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As he's called the God of Israel. He's the God of each and every one of us, and we are all his children. That is not a special title to anybody in specific. Heck yeah.